Hello and welcome. It's time for Life Questions, the show that includes your questions and your topic suggestions. I'm Jennifer Beck, filling in this week for Bill Harris. Well, the topics that we're going to discuss on today's show include grief. How do you deal with it? How do you help others who are grieving? And where is our country directed? What direction are we going as we've seen so many things happen in the past year? Well, we have a great group of pastors returning for today's discussion, and they are Pastor Jeff Kimberly from Neopolis Church of Christ, Pastor Neil Whitney at the church at Allentown, <laughs> Pastor Ed Reinhardt of St. Peter's and Emmanuel, St. <laughs> Peter's in New Bremen, Emmanuel in Kettlersville, and Pastor Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship in Lima. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us. Thank you so much for being be with back. us again mm -hmm. this week. Thanks. So we received a question from a viewer who says, my dad died of COVID in September and I hurt so badly for my mom. I can't take her hurt away. Can you give me advice on how to encourage her? And fortunately, there have been many recoveries from COVID and we praise God for that. But every life is valuable. And when we, the ones that have been lost, there have been families left mm -hmm. with a lot of struggle, a lot of heartache, some hurts because they haven't been able to see their loved mm -hmm. ones. How do we help these people? What do we say? Definitely defining moments in life going on right now. About a year and a half ago, my older brother passed away and I had one of those defining moments mm -hmm. when it came to grief. A lady sent me a text and she said, uh, grief is love with no place to go. Mm -hmm. Grief is love with no place to go. And that is so true. And in a situation like that, the person has love that they're used to sharing. And all of a sudden there's no place for that love to go. So we need to become a place for that love to go. So what can we do to be that? How do we become that, that place for love to go? Do we reach out to people who we know are grieving? Do we respect them as they're going through the grieving process, which can have so many emotions along with it? What, what do we do? I think you do all of the above. I, I think there's a time to reach out to them and encourage them and, and be there for them. But at the same time, I think there's a time to give them their privacy and, and to let them mourn. And, you know, there's a time for joy and a time for mourning, the Bible says, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 yeah, it's love with no place to go. That's a great way to put it. So, but we have to be intentional on how we reach out to them. And, but we also have to give them their space to mourn mm. as well. I think one of the things that we need to, and this individual, I mean, what, call your mom. Be, be more active. I mean, it, it, we, we've see seen this before COVID. Four weeks after a death, family's back doing their thing. And... Mom, spouse, individual had that empty spot. We need to, we can't fill the spot. We'll never replace and take that. It's, but we need, we need to step in and walk alongside. And so how do we walk alongside? That's going to be on an individual basis. How do we, how do we help them in that, in that journey uh, and, and realize it's a journey? There's, there's five stages of grief, but they're not five steps. Mm -hmm. And you cycle and you'll, you'll fluctuate back from one to the other, and there's going to be moments of anger. And everybody's is different. And, and everybody's different. And, and that, that's the challenge in, in, in all the grief. And then you take and put in the, the pandemic and how we ha were separated. Mm -hmm. um, so families didn't get to grieve the way they did before. So we didn't get to go to grandpa's funeral. We didn't get to go to so-and-so's. We didn't, I couldn't be in the, the funeral home. I didn't get the visitation hours. All we had was a gravesite. It was a all these different things have impacted. I didn't impacted. get to say goodbye. I didn't get to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know of an individual. Matter of fact, I lunch two Saturdays ago. The individual set come up, sat beside me. At, at, yes, I was at a bar, um, and pastor at a bar. That's a good thing. The pastor was at a bar. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and he he said that his dad had passed of COVID, and it, he passed in November, and he he never had a moment to say goodbye at all. So was he feeling the struggle from oh, he that? He was feeling was struggle. Was he feeling anger from oh, that? Oh, he was, was feeling he feeling... anger. He was feeling um, resentment. So he had needs. He had needs. He had needs. So we need to be open to the people that have needs that are struggling with the death of loved ones, friends, family, etc. Hear them. 
Celebrate that person's life. Let them tell their story. And sometimes that's what they need to, so that the love that doesn't have any place to go can be found. And for people that are still alive in your midst, there's two great words, connect now. You have the opportunity, connect, connect now. now, like you never did before. And we shouldn't use the restrictions that have been placed under so many people as a reason not to connect because we have FaceTime and we have, and I'm speaking to myself, I'm not, I, I haven't been great at this. We need to connect, whether it is in person or whether it is by technology, we need to connect. And sometimes just a positive word mm -hmm. to that person without anything expected in return can go a long way, can mean a lot. Or just how are you doing? My wife's how are you feeling? birthday is today. Um, and I text this morning and said, Aunt Donna, thinking of you. And in November, I went to Michigan and did her husband's funeral. Mm. Other health conditions, COVID ended up being the final one. And I just, I just texted her, said, thinking of you a lot, praying for you, hope you have a blessed day. Just, just that's all it takes to let them know they're not alone. Mm -hmm. To individuals who are struggling with grief, who may feel very alone, mm -hmm. would you encourage them to reach out to any of you or to a pastor, to someone who will listen without judgment? And I think that's a key, listen without judgment. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think I could speak for all of us. Our doors are, I mean, our, our doors are open. Our, our email box is free. What, however you want to connect with us, we, we'll be happy to listen. Do you want my cell phone number now? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it, it, seriously, if you need call and it, it, we need, I'm there. And I, I mean, I have individuals that I've told point blank, you dial, I'm there. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm, you're, you're top of my list. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how we have to live as individuals with family, et cetera. Yeah. And just give that, give that free, free open door. Yeah. You need me, I'm there. And, and, and not just with grief, with anything. Right. You know, um, my dad's birthday is, a, is coming up next week. And my mom called me and she said, hey, it would be great if you and the kids and, and, and my wife could, could come and just spend five minutes with him just so he could see you so he's not <laughs> so down. He's just down, he's just, he's just down. And so we're working out how we're going to do that. But it's so important to do that. And not just, I mean, yeah, FaceTime or Zoom are great. But sometimes you need that person in front of you mm -hmm. that you can see that you can hear and not through a computer screen. So, so reach out, you know, reach out if you're struggling. So there's a thought for you as we're going to transition to another topic. Um, if you know someone who's going through grief, reach out to them. If you're the one going through grief, don't go through it alone. Be willing to reach out to someone else. The enemy wants you to go through it alone, and that is not the way that you're designed to be. God has a plan for you, even though you have gone through a lot of struggles. You can call us here at TV44 as well. We'll pray with you, we'll talk with you, we'll listen to you, we'll connect you with a church, we'll do whatever we are able to do to help you. We're well, moving on to another topic that we received from our viewers. A woman says, I'm really concerned. Uh, actually, I don't remember if it's a woman or man, to be honest, but the viewer says, I'm really concerned about the future of our country. I am afraid that it is going to be headed in a very bad direction next year. I know that I need to trust God, but I think things are going to take a bad turn in 2021. And here we are in 2021, and there's a little bit of unknowns that exist and fear that, that, is, that is around. How do we help this person out? Well, you know, a thought that I had when I heard that was, at least for the believer, you know, Jesus said, he or she who endures to the end shall be saved. Now, you know, I consider myself saved, okay? But um, and we can talk about, you know, um, a lot of things concerning salvation, but really for the believers at least, I think we need to talk about the unbelievers, but I think for the believers, Jesus said, look, Times are going to be tough. Life will not, uh, you know, be easy. And things, you know, as things start getting toward the end of the age, you know, wars, rumors of wars and so forth, birth pangs and so forth. I mean, you know, the end. And are we in the end times? Well, that's, that's another subject that I'll leave to Ed, but, uh, you know. <laughs> I was thinking more Henny Penny, but go ahead. <laughs> but, but really, I think that's the one thing that we have to understand. We need to endure in our faith. 
and it will be tougher. Um, you know, and there's some scriptures there, and it, I think it's meant to strengthen us and encourage us, all right? But, um, you know, really, Jesus warned us that, you know, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And he's our refuge, he's our shelter, he's our fortress, and things, the whole world can fall down around you, um, you know, and, and uh, he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. I think a good thing to do is to go to the Psalms. Go read the Psalms, you know, in there you'll find comfort. You know, Psalm 91, the protection Psalm, you know. Um, you know, Psalm number two, you know, why do the nations rage? You know, the nations are raging and the, who are they raging against? Really the Lord in the end. And we see a lot of manifestations of that. That's going to happen, but God told us to do something that we can do, otherwise he wouldn't have told us to do this, endure. Think about one of the last things Jesus says to his disciples in Matthew 28. Surely I'm with you always to the very end yes, of the age. he's with us. I mean, that right there should give us comfort. It doesn't matter, I mean, 2020 threw everything it had at us, I think, I think including the kitchen sink. <laughs> but 2021 might do the same thing, but God is with us through it all. Yeah. God was with us in 2020, God will be with us in 2021. Yeah. And the other thing too is this, you know, we're, I think some of us are thinking, oh my gosh, 2021, you know, like it's gonna be another 2020 and it's gonna get worse. You know, things are gonna get better for God's children. I really do. Yes, things are gonna be tough. Doesn't mean things are gonna get easier, but they can get better. And for all of the defeats that we see, all of the ways that we see that the adversary is winning here and winning there, you know what? We're gonna see some tremendous things. You know what, as evil abounds, you know, grace abounds more. So we're gonna see both. It's all about your perspective. Gotta have the right perspective. Yeah. And in America, we have it made, we have it easy. My grandpa used to say, I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go very far outside of this country to find right. people that are way worse off than we are. Yeah, really. You don't have to go very far outside your little bubble right. mm -hmm. to find people that are worse off than yeah. you. So we need to be thankful. We need yeah. to be grateful and quit whining, moaning, and complaining. And what does that do when we purposefully have a mode of gratefulness? When we wake up every day and Breathe. state, I'm going to be grateful for this, right. or in our minds, think through five or six things that we can be happy about, even mm -hmm. though there's 80 things that we could probably complain about. Yeah. Yeah. But how does that change our mindset and everything else that we do if that's the direction yeah. that we you take? You know, God's not wringing his hands about, oh my gosh, you know, what's going on and who's going to be the president and all this stuff. You know, we, you know, I, I love my country. I'm a, I consider myself a patriot. And uh, certainly I, I don't like to see a lot of the things that we're seeing and hearing, but uh, you know, I'm also a child of the king and I have a kingdom also, mm -hmm. you know, the kingdom of God. And that kingdom is fine, you know? And uh, that doesn't mean, I, oh, I don't care about our country. No, I think that's part of, of being a good citizen, you know, is, is to, I think the best citizens are folks that believe in the Lord and, and, and belong to that kingdom. But I, 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 again, where is our anchor? Is our anchor in the comfort and the convenience uh, that we had in 2019? Or are we gonna look to the future where God is our source? God is going to make or break our life, not who's in power, um, you know, not, and, and certainly there's gonna be threats and the devil's gonna do his best to bring us down. But, you know, I belong to a Lord that has a lot of promises in his word. And as long as I have my, you know, face in the book instead of being on Facebook, you know, yeah. I'll be better off. You know, so I don't know, I don't know how many of you do this, but think of a word to kind of sum up how you're going to spend your year. And so my word for 2021 is gratitude, mm -hmm. is having an attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. in 2021. And, and that is so important when you get up in the morning and you go, oh, hey, it's another day. I can, I have breath in my lungs. I have air right. in my lungs. I can mm -hmm. go and share. It's, it's, it's looking at everything intentionally as being grateful. And when no. you do that, your whole attitude changes. I, yeah, I'm worried about our country. Absolutely I am. But why am I worrying about it? God already knows what's going to happen. Right. Just choose to be grateful that you have another day to go and share his love with others. Yep. All right. We're going to be right back. So hold your thoughts. 
in about 30 seconds. We'll let you guys talk right again. We're going to take a quick break and then we will return for a little bit more of our conversation on today's life questions. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We are back and we are continuing our discussion about the direction of our country. Do you feel concerns over the direction that our country is taking? And what does it say about trusting God and how are we to be trusting God? Pastor Neil, before we went to break, you were just about ready to speak on something on, on that topic. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, you know, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. I shared that with a non-believer one time and he read that and he said, you know what, uh, I'm, supposed to, or I'm supposed to trust in God, I'm supposed to lean on him my understanding, I'm supposed to acknowledge him in all my ways, so I'm supposed to do three things and God's only going to direct my paths, that's not fair. <laughs> and I said, time out. If you do those three things, God will do everything based on what you said mm -hmm. earlier. Immeasurably and more. I found that to be true in my life, is trusting God is the key. Yeah. It's not about me, it's not about us, it's about living my life in a way that God can live through me and other people can see that. And that's easy to say and that's possible to do but you know, there's people who are living surrounded by individuals who are speaking opposite. Uh, maybe it's a family member who's a Christian and surrounded by people who aren't Christians or in a workplace. And it can be hard to combat the opposite messages that are constantly bombarding people all the time. Social media, all kinds of places are really encouraging the opposite of what you have just said. Yeah. Yeah, I lived through that too. I play ice hockey for a hobby and run into a lot of people in different towns that we play in and you get, you get resistance, but there's no power like uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. We're required to stand strong. That's, what, that's our theme in our church this year is stand strong in Jesus. Stand strong in Jesus. There's a Stand difference strong. between standing and sitting. Yep, that's for sure. Now we're sitting, of course, we're obviously sitting. <laughs> <laughs> but that reminds me of Psalm 1, I believe it is, that talks about what you do when you walk with God or when you sit, when you stop. So mm. standing strong, being ready is a key thing as we go into this new year. Yeah. Yep. Be yeah. ready. Be ready. Another person wrote in, um, I'm, I'm a similar topic. I'm looking at the future of our country and I'm concerned about the direction we're heading. But then I have to think about the things we've allowed in, abortion, lifestyles, violence, sin. Are we being judged? We've even had a situation where not long ago, um, the US Congress opened up with a prayer that's been very controversial. People are questioning it. The direction that we are heading in as a country. Do we need to be worried about what's mm -hmm. gonna be coming to us in this year because of the things that have been allowed in our country. Do we sky need to be scared? Falling. The sky is falling. Don't you people get it? I mean, we've just spent, what, before the break and after this, you guys have been talking about how easy it is to just sit back and let God be in charge. I'm a control freak, people. I like control. I like to be in charge. I like to have my way. I'm, I'm a pastor. That's why I'm the pastor of my, no, I'm teasing, okay? A little bit. I, 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 how do you relinquish control? How do you not look at the facts that things are not right? How can you, I, so I get the two questions that we've looked at. I'm really concerned, uh, it says, I mean, I'm really concerned about where things are going. This one here, I'm looking at the future. Are all these things, is God judging us? 
I mean, if God's judging us, what's coming? This is the eschatology one you threw at me earlier. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, this is, this is what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, is God judging us? Possibly. Is God saying, here, because you made these, I'm going to let this come on you? I mean, we can go back through biblical history and look at where God's allowed famine and disaster and disease. We can, we can go look at it and go, yep, see, look, he did it before, he's doing it now. He's going to do it again. I mean, look at Revelation. I mean, he, he keeps saying, believe in me. And mm -hmm. he, keeps, he, keep, he says more's coming. I'm, we got the apocalypse and the horsemen. And I, I have horses, so I, I can relate to them. And, and it's, but do we possibly? That was a good end times uh, lecture there. Thanks. I, 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 we, we practiced this in a break. So. You know, the, actually, let's talk about control. You know, um, first of all, I, as the church, you know, when you read the Bible, the church has a role to play. And, and we do have, I won't say we have control, but we have influence. And the influence we have is uh, in multiple fronts. One is intercession. Because the Bible says to pray for our leaders, regardless of who's in the White House, whether it's your party's person or not, pray for our leaders. And in fact, if you read that scripture verse, I think it's uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And it says, so that we can live a life of peace and that the gospel can be promoted. And so I think that, you know, if, if we're going to be evaluated by the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, you know, we're already in heaven, everything's fine, but, but we are going to get uh, a reward for what we're doing. And one of those criteria for our evaluation, I call it, is uh, did you pray? Did you pray for your leaders? Because a lot of things will happen if we don't pray or won't happen if we don't pray. So intercession is number one. I think number two is witness. You know, we have a great commission that says, you know, uh, you know, when you go out, make disciples, um, and, and we are to be a salt and light. And, uh, you know, we do have influence on this, more than what we think, more than what we think. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the uh, movement in morals, as, you know, the surveys show that, you know, more and more people believe that, you know, abortion's fine and, and so forth, and there's, um, you know, living together's fine now, and, and even so-called liberals back in, you know, two or three decades ago were against those things, you know, and now many people who say they're Christians are for those things, you know, are we going to make a, a, a stand and say what the word of God says or not? Not in a hateful way saying, you know, you sinners, you shouldn't do this, but to show that we have a loving God that's given us, you know, a, a way to live in his word that's good for us. And if we represent that, if we model that and pray for it, God will do things. You know, uh, one last thing too is, is that, you know, when God put man on the earth and everything was perfect and man committed high treason, sold out to God, God didn't renege on, hey, you're in charge. Remember, he says, go, take dominion, okay? And when we handed the lease over, well, when we effectively rebelled against God, Satan was able to take the lease, all right? He has that lease and God is not going to renege on that. And he is the God of this world. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says that. So there are going to be famines. There are going to be wars and so forth. God is not causing it, all right? We are in a fallen world and that, that will come to an end, you see. So, but we are here uh, at the direction of Jesus to stand um, as his police force, if you will, in a bad neighborhood to be the salt and the light and to pray. And that's when God will move in because he's kind of, yes, he can do anything he wants, but this is the plan. We are here, we are, to, we are the representatives, and he will come in if we ask him to and move on things. So we're not helpless, we're not in control, but I think we have influence. I think if we would go back to Psalm 121, which is for me one of my life verses, or actually chapters, <clears throat> I lift my eyes unto the hills, where does my help come from? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I understand the question. I understand the concern. I understand the, the direness of the situation. I understand what future says in Revelation and what we're facing. Mm -hmm. how, am I, how am I going to get through 2021 with this? How am I, how am I going to face this? How, how am I, what am I, what am I, I lift my eyes under the hills. Where does my help come right. from? Where is your help going to come from? Yep. The very maker of heaven and earth. Amen. The rest of that chapter. Yep. 
and talks about he will never never leave you. He, he will not let you slumber nor sleep. He will, he will not let your foot slip. He will guard you by day and night. I mean, it goes through this whole thing. All that God will do. Psalm 121, the whole chapter. Read the whole thing. Understand daily, that maybe. daily, read if you've got to. <laughs> read, uh, get up. Who, where's my help going to? Where's my help coming from today? I mean, I know where Michael is. I mean, okay. Thanks, Michael, but I don't know that you're the help I need here today. <laughs> and I need Jesus. Yeah. I need, I need him to speak into me. I need him to give me confidence. After all, we are a child of the king. We are ambassadors. We, we, and that's, we got to take go. that ambassadorship in, in, and we have to understand represent. it. That we are to repre exempt, represent. We are to take to the people. We are to reconcile the world to him. Good. And we're doing his business. We are his employees. We need to get going. We need to stop this. Yes. We are essential in God's kingdom to make his kingdom known on this earth. Time to go to work, folks. No lock in for us. Well, not even that. Not even ambassadors. We're called to be lighthouses, too. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men so you may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And we're moving lighthouses because we go everywhere. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, but, you know, I asked this question last week in our sermon at, our, at my church. How bright your light? How bright is your light? Is your light, you know, kind of dim? Is it going out? Is it flickering? Is it, where, how bright is your light? Two words. Don't worry. Amen. Don't worry. Good. You use the word concern, which is good. The Bible says, don't worry. Don't take any thought for tomorrow. Good. It doesn't mean you're not supposed to care for tomorrow, but, yeah. but don't worry. My mother used to always say, worry puts shame on the Savior. And how many times does the Bible say, don't be afraid? Right. Mm. Right. Fear not. Fear not. So that's where we're going to end. How bright is your light shining? Jeff had it right. How bright is your light shining? This is a time <clears throat> when God's light needs to be bright and you can be that light shiner, that bright light for all people. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry. When you feel that worry come upon you, instead pass that burden onto your Savior, yeah, onto God. God. Give it to him and trust that he has a plan, even if you can't see the plan. We can't see the plan in many realms, but we trust the one who's got the great plan for us. All right, I want to thank this great panel we've had with us for the past two weeks, and we hope to have Bill Harris back with us next week. Until then, I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks so much for joining us right here on Life Questions on TV44. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.